What's up guys, MSD here, back with another video on Marvel Contest of Champions. Here we are in part 2 of the Grand Master Saga. This video will be probably a little lengthy, but I feel that the contents of the video are going to be very useful for the Grand Master fight, at least in its current state, from the data mine abilities that we had from a few months ago. So... I'm just going to jump right in, and here we go. So, before we get into any of the Grandmaster's phases, we first have to break down two things. What each of the tokens represent, and the rules of the fight. So, we're going to start off with the tokens. So, this is a very simplified version of the Grandmaster's abilities from the data mine information. I just put it into more into more of like a sentence instead of just statements so I kind of in, I interpreted it into a sentence it is the same information you will see all the same you know stuff said in his actual abilities I just put it in a form where it's more easy to understand where it's easier to understand I'm sorry I'm tired it's late um, I just really wanted to get this done I was very keen on finishing this video so I am I'm just uh, I'm ready to get it done. So, the tokens. So, each time you complete a challenge issued by the Grand Master, or he throws a special one and you successfully execute it, you will receive a token of competence, and you will see that as a TOC. Every action you fail, you will receive a token of blunder, or a TOB. Five tokens of blunder, and you are knocked out because he gets to a special three, and the special three is an instant KO. So, well, the tokens will come more into importance when we discuss the rules of the fight but the tokens are borderline if you do the fight correctly you receive tokens of competence if you do the fight incorrectly you receive tokens of blunder five tokens of blunder and you're dead moving on heavy attack this is just a piece of information probably a little vital to know just in case you know his heavy is very quick it cannot be interrupted, and it removes all of your tokens of competence. So just keep that in mind. But this is really where the Grandmaster starts to get complicated, but it also starts to make more sense. So rules of the fight. The Grandmaster has four phases, similar to the 6.2 champion, and when he enters a new phase, it resets your power to zero. So keep that in mind when going against the Grandmaster. And it also removes all tokens not just tokens of competence tokens of blunder as well so let's say you mess up once or twice and you have a few tokens of blunder but you push them to another phase all of the tokens are removed so those tokens of blunder go away that is very very important to remember after each phase the grandmaster will prepare for 3.5 seconds he will become indestructible and very defensive so Essentially, before each phase, he has two kind of sections before the phase officially begins. He has this phase, which is preparation, where he just kind of sits in the corner and most likely will hold block. And then the next one, after preparation, he becomes infuriated for six seconds before the phase officially begins, becoming unblockable, unstoppable, and very aggressive. So, what you have to be mindful of here is right after preparation ends, right after he goes super defensive, he, be, he will become unblockable, unstoppable, and very aggressive. So basically, you just have to dash back, maybe throw a few light attacks to get him to preemptively block, and just hope that he doesn't completely bulldoze you into the corner and like throw a heavy attack and then you get screwed. But you just have to be very careful in that phase to not uh, screw up before the fight even officially begins. So, as well as granting you zero power. So, you're not going to hit him at all, but if you do land a hit, you're not going to get any power in that infuriation phase. The Grandmaster can become wounded at certain points in each phase. This is right after infuriation, so this is when the phase officially begins. The Grandmaster can become wounded at certain points in each phase, Stunning him and allowing for damage. This is the only way you will deal damage to the Grandmaster during his wounded phases. 
There's no other way you can deal any sort of damage to him. He doesn't take any damage from DOTs, as stated in his signature ability. Now thinking of it, I probably should have put that somewhere here. But essentially, his signature ability grants him immunity to any damage except damage from being, from being struck. And he cannot lose more than 5% of his max health per hit. That's basically what it does. Oh, and he also can't be evaded or missed. So Ghost is out and evade champions or evade reliant champions are out. So, moving on. Each token of competence will increase your attacks by 150% and up to 5 of your tokens can persist with other champions through the fight. So let's say you get three tokens of competence you're in like the second phase and you die that's okay those three tokens of competence will persist with another champion going back into the fight so if you're not going for a solo you're just going to get them down you don't really know you're not really that prepared it's okay because the tokens are going to persist with you for other champions <sighs> moving on after the Grandmaster is wounded, all of your tokens of competence are removed, and the phase will continue. So when he's in this wounded state, basically the phase is paused, and that's when you need to get in as much damage as you physically, mentally, emotionally, and psychologically can before the phase continues and the Grandmaster battle rages on. So, after that... Very nice description of how the rules of the fight legitimately work. We will start to delve into the phases. So as mentioned before, he has four phases. This is phase one, which takes place from 100% to 70%. So, neither champion can gain power in this phase, meaning you don't have to worry. Well, the Grandmaster can gain power, but only in a certain way. But from landing strikes, you don't have to worry about him gaining any power, but you don't gain any power as well. So if you're using a champion that relies on using special attacks, maybe not the best idea for this fight. That's why I made a list of who I think is going to be the best champions for this fight. Moving on. Contact made... Contact must be made with the Grandmaster within a 10 second period or you will degenerate a small amount of health per second. I believe it's somewhere around like 400 damage per second. Very similar to Abyss of Legends Captain Marvel movie where if you're above 1.5 bars of power you start to take a small little amount of degen every second per second until you lose that power. And in this sense it's basically you have to hit the Grandmaster within 10 seconds or you degen. So... Every intercept will grant you a token of competence. So this phase is really just about kind of getting adjusted to the fight, his animations, and you just want to bang out those backdraft intercepts. You just want to get in the game, get those five tokens of competence, and really get rolling because the next phase will kind of dictate how long you stay in the first phase. The Grandmaster will randomly ban tactics in the fight. So... The, this is kind of your introduction to how the Grandmaster is going to function. Throughout each phase, he's going to have some sort of ability to uh, tamper with what you can actually do in the fight, uh, dampen your abilities in the fight, and make you do things that usually you wouldn't be doing in kind of a very skill, in really any fight. But this is where the skill comes in. You have to work around this and adapt your play style in order for maximum efficiency in the fight. So, the tactics that he can ban at any time randomly, in any order, would be light attacks, using dexterity, and parrying. So, of all the tactics, of all the kind of things that happen, these three are definitely the worst. You know, light attacks, dexing, and parrying are definitely the worst things that get banned, but again... This is kind of the warm-up phase, the practice phase. So once you master this phase and you master kind of his mechanics, you could potentially have the chance at a one-shot. Moving on, using one of these results in a token of blunder. So if he bans light attacks and you use light attacks, you gain a token of blunder. Pretty straightforward there. So after all three have a ban, so after he's banned light attacks, dexterity, and parrying, the Grandmaster will prepare for a special one. This is the only way he can gain power in this phase. And I'm 
almost positive, no, 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 I am positive that after all three tactics have been banned, they are all unbanned, and then the Grandmaster will gain power for his special one. So, you don't have to worry about, you know, oh my god, I, what, I can't dex his special one, but it's okay, because all the tactics were unbanned. So, after every successful special one, and I'll explain, special one's very important for the fight. Uh, the Grandmaster becomes wounded for 8 seconds, and that's when, you know, boom, boom, damage, damage, big yellow numbers, all that good stuff. So, the special one, arguably, either one of the most or the most crucial part about this fight is understanding the mechanics of his special one attack. The first beam is unblockable. If you go back and watch the data mines, excuse me, gameplay, it's more of a delayed first beam, but it's like an Iron Man beam. It's just a little delayed, more like Iron Patriot or Doctor Doom's second half of a special one. It is unblockable and it is not the same as normal Iron Man. It is a little unique, but the you know getting into the rim, the, the rhythm of the evading his special one you should be okay it doesn't seem that bad it's just you know it's one beam you're good or at least the first part's just one beam so if you get hit by this beam all other actions will result in failure now not only does getting hit by this beam give you a token of blunder but failing the other three actions excuse me also grant you tokens of blunder, which means if you mess up on a special one, you're already at four tokens of blunder, which means one more slip up and you're dead. That's why the special one, in my opinion, is the most crucial part of this fight to master and comprehend in order to have a good time fighting the Grandmaster. So, special one. The Grandmaster will shuffle three blocks after his first beam, after that unblockable beam, each with a symbol and a color. In order to complete the special one successfully, you must complete the symbols in order from left to right under his health bar. So all of the symbols will appear under his health bar before the special animations legitimately begin, and you have to complete each of those symbols, what they're asking you to do, in order from left to right. The symbols and the colors are blocking, which would be a blue symbol, it'd be a shield symbol, getting struck, which would be a red symbol, and then dodging, which would be an evade symbol or a dexterity mastery symbol, and that is green. The beams also don't stun. You are going to take damage, I believe, but the beams don't stun unless, of course, you get hit by the first beam of the special one or you mess up the order then you get stunned and you're pretty much dead so the the challenges the symbols are completely random there is no order you could get three of the same all three two and one one and two they come in any order and you just have to be on your toes because the beams don't wait for you the once they're all shuffled and ready to go you can see what's up there and they just start going but I tweeted about this a few months ago after the data mine information officially was out in public. Um, it was kind of a mnemonic device to help remember what the colors mean. So blue means block, red means wrecked, get hit, and green means get, like get out. So blue means block, uh, red means wrecked or get hit, and green means get out. So that's kind of what I made up for that. Um, for that part of the Grandmaster, I thought it was kind of clever, and a lot, of, a lot of other people thought it was as well. So I might, I might bring that back this week, so people are aware of it again. Unless they, you know, forget that I said it in this video, I'll probably just do it anyway. So yeah, that is a pretty borderline explanation of the special one. In my opinion, the most crucial part of this entire fight. And if you don't have a mastery of the special one, you are pretty screwed. Moving on to phase two, 69% to 30%. The Grandmaster becomes immune to stun for the rest of the fight, the rest of the remaining phases. From 69% to 0%, he is immune to stun. 
but that does not count his wounded state because in his wounded state he is stunned. So any stun besides the wounded state kind of internal stun, he is immune to. So no parrying, no passive stun with Wasp or Doctor Doom, none of that stuff. All immune to it. In this phase, you can get a bar of power, but every hit on the Grandmaster will grant him 15% of a bar of power as well as the Grandmaster will periodically assign a challenge. Here is the first introduction of the challenges. In Phase 1, it was just tactic banning, but in Phase 2 and 3 is challenges. So, periodically he will assign a challenge, and you have 7 seconds to complete the challenge. Successfully completing one grants you a token of competence. Failing a challenge is a token of blunder. And remember, 5 TOBs and you are KO'd. The challenges are random, they have no particular order, and can only be assigned once per cycle until they are reset after he uses, um, after all the challenges have been cycled and he gets wounded. So the challenges are with a hit, which means dash back, throw a light attack in the air, and don't hit him at all, that's whiffing. Landing a crit, which is solely based on RNG, so RNGs, look out for us. Intercepting, which is, you know, if you've made it this far, have to have at least some knowledge of intercepting. Gaining a buff, which could simply be using dexterity, because that's a buff. And then inflicting a DOT. And this is what I was referring to in my best champions list that can make or break a solo. If you don't if you do not have easy access to a damage overtime debuff. Whether it be your special one, because you can gain up to one bar of power, or in any of your base attacks, heavy attacks, light attacks, medium attacks, you cannot complete all the cycles, which means you cannot get past phase two. You will be stuck at phase two if you cannot inflict the DOT. That is why DOTs are so important. And that's why champions like, um, what's a good one that I'm probably not remembering Oh man, champions like Corvus Glaive are not going to be good for this phase because he will not do any damage below 69%. He will just be completely roadblocked, no DOTs, he's screwed. So champs like that, you need a DOT in order to get past this phase. Either if you're not going for a solo, bring a champion that can inflict a DOT. Just do something in order to get past this phase. Once you've completed all the challenges, once you've, they've all cycled at least once, remember they're all in random order, so they can come in any order that the Grandmaster pleases, he will become wounded for 7 seconds, and as you know, after the wounded phase is over, all of your tokens of competence are removed, uh, you lose all your power, and the phase will continue. So phase 2 is not really that bad, there is no punishment in phase 2, except you can give him too much power accidentally, and if you don't have a DOT, you can't complete phase 2 to begin with. So yeah, that's phase 2. More on the easy side of things, probably the easiest phase of the Grandmaster's kit would be phase 2. Moving on to phase 3, 29% to 1%. The Grandmaster will gain 5% of a bar of power every second. This is paused during his specials, but it will gain 10% potency after every special attack. So, you cannot control the Grandmaster's power at all, which is another part of his signature ability. Again, probably should have put that somewhere in this video. He cannot be power controlled, power altered, none of that stuff. He's immune to all of it. And in this phase, you can't stop his power gain. So, I don't know if landing hits still grants him power. We're going to have to see when, you know, the fight arrives. But here it just seems a landing hits don't give him any power, but he just gains power every second. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. I'll see. We'll, like, we'll have to see how that plays out when the fight is officially in the game next week. Excuse me. Moving on. Every 8.5 seconds, a challenge is issued. Another set of challenges. A uh, challenge is issued for 7 seconds. Of course, success is a token of competence. Failure is a token of blunder. The challenges are paused during the Grandmaster Special Attacks. Another very important thing to keep in mind of. Before we get into the challenges, 
Another fun and interactive part about this phase, which makes this phase kind of suck a little bit, because not only do you have to pay attention to the challenges and the timers and his power, but every 22 and a half seconds, you will get reverse controls for eight and a half seconds. Awesome. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you, Kabam Mike. Appreciate that, bro. Or whoever designs these fights, you're a true homie for that one. Fist pump, bro. Fist pump. I digress. All right, moving on to the challenges. So the challenges in this phase would be striking into his block, back dashing or back dashes. I'm not sure if it's going to make you just do one or multiple. That's why I put the little S in the parentheses in the uh, the columns. Oh, God, what are they called? Whatever, whatever they're called. I can't think right now. I'm ready to go to bed. Um, so striking into his block, performing back, dashes or a back dash knocking the grandmaster down that, that might be a little tricky um depends on how much power you can get in this phase standing still this one might suck depending on how long you have to stand still this kind of reminds me of mojo's um his kind of objective thing where you have to idle for ha a second and a half and that can really just throw off the rhythm of a fight just like standing still I don't really like that mechanic. It's not. It doesn't really yield many champions any greatness. I mean, the only exceptions would be like Stark and Hand Spider-Man refreshing his taunts, um, Sabretooth turning his passive, his active fury into a passive one. That's really all I can think of. But standing still, that could suck depending on how much time you have to remain idling. And then performing well-timed blocks or performing parries, but again, immune to stun, so you're just basically going to be parrying his normal attacks. So, how is he going to get wounded? Well, every fifth challenge that you complete, this remember, it, it doesn't say every fifth consecutive challenge. It says every fifth challenge. So let's say you complete three, oh man, you messed up, but it's okay, you complete the next two, you're still good. It does not say consecutive, so that's going to save some people if they mess up once, that it doesn't have to be consecutive challenges, it's just every fifth challenge. So, every fifth challenge will wound the Grandmaster for six seconds and pauses any new challenges. Very nice. So, again, wounded, boom, get in your damage, make sure you have a lot of um, tokens of competence, and then zero power, phase resets, tokens are gone, and uh, rinse and repeat. So yeah, phase three, definitely the most annoying phase because the, the fourth phase is really just like the final countdown. So phase three would, is definitely the most annoying phase, in my opinion, from the data mined information. All right, here we go. We're at the penultimate of the Grandmaster video. We're at the, uh, the apex of the mountain. Phase four from 1% to KO. The Grandmaster becomes infuriated. That should be infuriated. Um, the Grandmaster becomes infuriated for 18 seconds and becomes unstoppable while dashing. I am pretty sure this infuriation is different from his phase preparation infuriation. That's a lot of Asians. I'm pretty sure it's different. I'm pretty sure he just blatantly becomes unstoppable while dashing. No unblockable, no extra aggression. I'm pretty sure this is just unstoppable dashing for 18 seconds. Ooh, wow, nice deck crack there. Wow, great sidebar. Really keeping the videos consistent and on track. I digress. Back, back to what I was talking about. So, after the 18 second infuriation ends, the Grandmaster becomes permanently wounded, permanently wounded for the rest of the fight, and can only die from a special three. So basically, if you survive this 18 seconds, you are good to go, and he's dead. So you survive this, you're good. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes the Grandmaster Breakdown video. This is probably going to be like a 15-minute video, but I'm making this to help the community. So I suggest... For the people going for Legends runs or going for initial completion or 100% of Act 6 to watch this video, watch it in fragments, watch it as a whole and then review certain parts and go watch the data mined video to see his special animations and kind of prepare for what his 
a move set will potentially look like. So that's basically all I have for this video. Only gonna add two more things. Very minuscule. I mean, this one might not be as minuscule as this one, but uh, the special two will drain 10% of your power per hit, including block hits. So basically, the special two just gets rid of all your power. Um, not going to be the biggest deal in the world, except if you're in the phase two and you can only get DOTs off of your special one. It might be a little bit of, uh, of a bad time, but if you get lucky and the DOT is the first challenge and you get that off, you'll, you'll be okay. And special three is Dancing KO. That was, you know, that's pretty expected. So with that, that concludes my review, my breakdown, analytical analysis of the Grandmaster Boss from the data mine information. Obviously, things are subject to change before his official release. Some of these phases could have changed. Some of, some of his information could have been altered. Who knows? I don't. And with that, I want to thank you all so much for watching this extensive breakdown of the Grandmaster Boss for Act 6. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace.